So let's jump off this call. What's good, guys? If you're back here, welcome to the channel. I'm with my man, Joey. Uh, if you guys might recognize Joey from a video we did about five months ago, um, where Joey, I guess, tell him a little bit about yourself. Where were you five months ago, man? Yeah, so like you said, my name is Joey. Uh, five months ago, <clears throat> I kind of had gotten uh, kicked out of my dorm, <laughs> which is in Alaska. So I had to go back to San Antonio abruptly. Uh, no one knew me for a video there at all. Um, kind of was like, I was trying my best. I can say that I was, I was working hard to kind of like make like sales and whatnot and get, get known, but I just didn't know anything about how to do that. And more so on the creative side. Um, <clears throat> that's pretty much kind of where I was at still whenever I was on the call uh, with you about five months ago. And then just kind of from that call, just kind of like realizing I need to learn a lot more about sales if I wanted to be an entrepreneur and not just kind of like an in-house video guy. Yeah. Uh, and I did that. So like I kind of started paying more attention to your channel, uh, the stuff with Chris, um, Gary, um, did some other different like Facebook groups about video with videographers and making sales and whatnot. And then I kind of like, <clears throat> yeah, from then I got to come back up here to a lot. I'm back in Alaska, have my LLC, um, doing a lot more video work. Uh, I know it's like night and day, really the video person I was five months ago from now. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, just like things are going pretty good right now. So five months ago, uh, what was your strategy for video? What were you charging for videos? Two. Five months ago, uh, if you go, if, actually, if you go back, I remember we talked about this in the video five months ago, kind of like my only strategy was like cold email outreach sending stuff to at info emails, which is terrible. <laughs> and like, like just sending like a literally one night, I sent a hundred emails. Uh, that's, that's why I always say that I was, I'm not necessarily down on myself because at the time I was working hard, but I just wasn't working smart yet. Like sending like a hundred emails, literally getting no replies. Yeah. Um, and yeah, just the emails, like we talked about and again in that call, were all about me. We went over my emails and they, they were all about me. And it's kind of like, you're the first person to come up. First person to kind of open my eyes was like, they don't even know yeah you're reaching out to them so why do they want to know about you out of yeah. nowhere like how can you help them like what do you know about them like how have you like kind of already tried to learn about their business and whatnot so that was like huge definitely because even after our call that was still my main source of like reaching out to people um but it was just way stronger like when i was it's talking about oh like i i saw this on your website i think maybe this might help this is what i do blah 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 but mostly like 80 to 90 percent about them how can they can help them and that like helped me like tremendously got you so and what were you charging for video back then oh yeah back then shoot if i could make like 150 i was like let's go <laughs> and that was 150 and that was for you to shoot and edit everything right or you edit like i didn't even have i didn't even have like a, i didn't have a clear like oh it was this many was revisions like there was times i was like especially the real estate stuff like i was revising like the littlest things like 10 times like oh can you change it actually can you change it back can you change it back again but yeah that was all like 150 150 dollars like now like i probably won't even do a video for 150 dollars oh like for sure thing. yeah so uh what would you say were some of the i guess biggest lessons you learned from those because here's one thing i always tell people this happened with um uh, mentoring someone now and we did a shoot last week and for her we were, I was pretty much what I did with her. I was like, Hey, listen, you're going to run the shoot. I'm going to help you light. I'll do like the B-roll shots of like, you know, pickup shots and stuff like that. Things that I see as necessary. I'm going to let you run the shoot. And I'd be like, Hey, you know, I'll let you run it. But if I see little things and uh, we were doing something or we're shooting an interview and I was like, Hey, get a soundbite. And I was like, if you guys are shooting any kind of promo or anything like that, I was to get a soundbite who, what, and where, right? So who are you, who you're talking with, where you're at, and what are they doing? I think that's like, if you're going to do any kind of like little promo, I think that's like the basic you need to get. And then like a closing call to action. And sure enough, we did it. And it wasn't the greatest thing ever. And when we got back, like a couple, like a week later, when she starts editing it, she's like, yo, I'm really glad that you brought up asking for, the um the sound bite but she's like i wish i would have the person do it over again i was like this is a reason why when i tell you guys to go out and do these videos for like 150 bucks 200 dollars get your foot wet with messing up because when 
let's say you charge a client 500 bucks or a thousand dollars and you mess up the interview like what are you going to do so like there's always these little lessons that you learn with these small projects that teach you really big things so is there anything that you learned from when you're doing these 150 dollar videos and now you've changed to like a lesson that you're like i'm not making that mistake again yeah i mean definitely made the mistake uh one time of like i don't know why like i thought i was gonna be like some crazy color grader on final cut <laughs> and i have the a7 i have the a7 III and i was, I was shooting s log like the whole time uh, doing a real estate video and like it came out terrible like i probably like in order for it to not came out i shouldn't say terrible like it was usable they posted it and whatnot but like the pictures were just dull because i simply didn't know how to color grade and I also learned that I'm not interested in learning how to color grade. So now when I go shoot, I really just on no picture. I put my picture profile off. Okay. Um, yeah, I just kind of like go from there, like more so focused on like telling the story. And um, yeah, I'm not really worried about like color grading and all that. Um, there's some, there's like, like very, like very, very specific times I might go to S log. Like it's like, can control the light, like just crazy, uh, like the sun just blasting outside, something like that. But for the most part, yeah, like that would have been detrimental on a video now, like if I didn't know that. Um, I hate time, Yeah, yeah. And then one time I was, uh, I had a guy on camera. I plugged in. I don't know if you, have you seen the road mics? The road might go. I love those things. I got two of them. Yeah, exactly. Me too. So I uh, have it plugged in. I have, you know, I can clip it onto the top of the A7. Yeah. I have I have the red cord plugged into where the, actually the headphones are supposed to go, but it's still showing the levels because it's really only connected to the mic. So I'm thinking that it's good. Uh -huh. And I get back to my house and I plug it in. I'm like, no, <laughs> it's just internal recording from the A7. He's like kind of far away. Uh, I I messed with it enough where like he actually didn't even notice. I didn't say uh -huh. anything. Uh, but yeah, like again, that would have been detrimental. I don't shoot like today. I've, I've made that mistake once or twice. Um, that's funny. I love those mics. So, um, so what are you still shooting with the same? Are you still shooting with the same gear that you're shooting with back in Texas? Uh, yes. Part? Yes. For the most part. Yes. Like same camera for sure. Uh, the cool thing, I guess, uh, was like oh, those 150 videos and whatnot. Like I've always been a pretty good saver. Um, and that's kind of how I got this, the lights like this that okay. I can use now for interviews. Like, definitely didn't have that stuff back then. Um, I yeah, guess I remember you saying you didn't have any light. It's, honestly, some people forget your camera. Lighting is huge. Like, it's it's it makes such a big difference. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Definitely. Uh, these were big. Like all that money I made in the summer doing those because I was doing 150 videos, but honestly, they were in pretty high volume because that guy was coming to me a lot. Now I think about it because he was like, dang, I'm getting videos really cheap. <laughs> but uh, I mean, at the same time, yeah, I got me these. Uh, and then I'm trying to think what else. Oh, yeah, a nice drone. I got the, uh, the Mavic Air 2. Uh -huh. uh, but yeah. So but for the most part, yeah, like same camera, same gimbal. That's awesome. Um, okay, so you left Texas. You're back to Alaska. You kind of had to start over. Yeah, what I had to start over again. You start over again? Are you still in Alaska? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I mean, I mean, like when I was here before COVID, I was just kind of like starting to get known, like very, very little bit known. And when I got to Texas, I was not known at all. And then when I got here, I was like a brand new video person in pre-COVID. But but I had but the space I wanted to be in, I was not known at all. So I had to start over again. Cool. So what was starting over like? What, like what was your first step? Like when you got back to Alaska, what were the first things you started doing? <laughs> um so yeah so the guy the guy who kind of put me into video period um he kind of taught me that you can like really make a living out of it. his name is chitty and he ended up during COVID while i was gone he ended up stopped doing he stopped doing any corporate work and like we're just like i'm just making this i'm going to be the biggest real estate media production team in alaska so uh just to kind of like get some work i was working with him doing real estate stuff but like i i even knew like like, yo, like, this is, I don't like this. Like, I don't like this couch. Like, it doesn't move. It doesn't do nothing. It's just here. And then he was like, uh, he, he actually helped me too because he had clients that were coming to him for corporate work. Uh -huh. He wasn't doing anymore. So he was kind of just like throwing them to me, like alley-oops. So like, that was a blessing for sure. Okay. Uh, so that kind of, that right there. Um, and then also, like I told you, something that's been big for me is uh, 
the LinkedIn really like, presence on LinkedIn, like huge. Um, definitely got a lot of like connections through there. Um, and then the soapbox videos. So the soapbox videos, like for people who don't know, it's kind of like a video you might send um, in a cold email, but you're like talking on a video call with them. And you're kind of like going through the website, talking about things you like. Uh, I would throw in things that you know personally about them to show that you kind of care. Like you're not just sending these to a million people, copy and paste. Yeah. Uh, and then uh, those right there, like I'm over 50% on replying right now for cold outreach. So anyone that's cold outreach, like that's crazy. They're probably like, what the heck? <laughs> But yeah. Uh, so with the soapbox stuff, so like you showed me one of the videos that you were doing. Is that your first email engagement that you do with the client of like, is that like your first reach out? You're like, hey, I came across your website. Here it is. Or are you like building up the relationship a little bit? And then you're like, hey, watch this video. Right now, my process is I um, have the sales navigator um, LinkedIn profile, right. it's like a paid subscription you use, and it kind of like helps you navigate through like the search engines a little bit better. But uh, basically, right now my process is I connect with them on LinkedIn, send them a message. Hey, I noticed I'm, I'm, my target market is marketing directors right now. Okay. So, so hey, I noticed uh, easy like hey, so and so, I noticed we're both involved in marketing here in Alaska and uh, just wanted to connect exclamation point um some people some people view my profile and be like nah don't connect other people will view my profile <laughs> connect they even leave a message like hey nice to connect with you blah blah, blah. um and then usually all the connections i make from that week uh -huh. um, during the weekend i make soapbox videos for those connections and i send them out to their email because once i once I connect with them on linkedin then i'm allowed to see their email and it's not like the info email that you would get from their website. It's like their email. email. So like my thing with LinkedIn was just that I was, I was able to connect with decision makers and not have to go through the gatekeepers that may be like social media, that may just run social media and you have to, you have to get them to relay the message to decision makers. I wanted to connect with decision makers right off the bat. That's dope. Yeah. So five months ago, 150 bucks for a video. How much are you charging for videos now? Uh, usually probably not doing, I'm not doing too many videos that are under a thousand, uh, but I would say on average, probably about 1500 a video. How does that feel to make that much more money and have so much more time? Shoot. It's amazing. <laughs> it's kind of like, uh, um, uh, Chitty, the guy I was just talking about, who started the media thing kind of just explained to me, it's like, you kind of have to like pay your dues at first. Like you said, like you have to go out there and do the 150 videos, hundred dollar videos and like get your feet wet, mess up and whatnot. And then you get here and then, you know, I hope to be at a certain point, you know, six months from now where it's like 1500, like I'm not making a video for 1500, you have to have yeah. 2000, you know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah, just like trying to keep climbing a ladder and like, again, keep paying my dues. Yeah, while still respecting myself at the same time, but- Of know. course, of course, yeah. but you gotta make the money. I hope you're saving some of that money. Uh, yeah, for sure. So what's like, what's next for you? What do you have lined up? What are you trying to do next? Um, I would say next for me, there's definitely some, some big com uh, companies here locally that, uh, I've connected with some of their like marketing people or CEOs on LinkedIn and like, kind of just like building those relationships, uh, caught them like, do you, do you know the phrase like dream 100? No. So it's kind of like, kind of like having like a hundred people where it's like, if you can connect with them and work with them, like those, like that's who you want to be working with basically. So kind of just like building that dream 100, like these people, like I want to be working with, uh, kind of building the connection with them. And then, um, yeah, that's that's kind of like what I'm looking like for. That's like my main goal right now, is connecting with the right people. Gotcha. Uh, let's have another question here. Okay, so now that you're in this position now, do you still think gear is as important as people make it out to be? Oh, not at all. I was actually, I was actually, I was just watching, before we got on this call, I was watching a video about the new Sony A1. And I was just thinking like, I don't know, I'm killing it with the A7 III. <laughs> like, I don't even care about the A7S III. Like, literally, like, it doesn't matter. Like, well, first of all, we don't even have 4K phone screens yet. Yeah. <laughs> so my 1080 uh, 60 is fine. Like, I don't, I don't care. Like, really, yeah. I think okay. the most important parts of the clients don't care. And for me, I got the A7S3 mm -hmm. and I have not used it for one shoot yet. I'm still using my A7 III 
definitely I've seen a difference at one of my last shoots I did. I had the person doing behind the scenes using the A7S III. And I was like, damn, the dynamic range in this is pretty crazy. Like the quality mm -hmm. is really fucking good. But I was like, the A7 III is, is still such a great camera for a lot of people, mm -hmm. especially if I think you can get one for like 1600 bucks now. Dude, the price is dropping because they keep dropping new cameras. Yeah. Yeah. I consider buying another one. Uh, hopefully, actually, if I do get another one, I might, if they drop the price in the A7S III soon, I, I might cop another one. Mm -hmm. um, okay. So I guess, um, is there any questions or anything that you've been like, I know you sort of have a mentor there now that's been helping you. Is there anything that I can help you with? Anything that you've been like wondering about? Yeah, I know you had asked me about uh, the website. Um, like what, I guess, where did, you, like, where did you go to make yours? Is that kind of like, it's kind of something that like I've been like, oh, I need to do it and then I'll start on it and then I'll have like three projects that I need to edit and then like it gets pushed back and it gets pushed back and it gets pushed back. And then like something will happen where like someone will be like, oh, do you have a website? I'll be like, oh yeah, it's, I'm working on it right now. It's getting built. Like, <laughs> and it's not. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so for me, when I built my website, I did it through Squarespace. And the reason I did it through Squarespace is that I was, when I was still living in New York, I was going to hire a buddy of mine to build a website. And uh, I was like, how much for this? And he's like, 5Gs. I was like, bro, I was like, I'm broke as fuck. I was like, I can't afford 5Gs for a website. I thought 5Gs for a website was crazy. Yeah. So uh, I signed up. I was like, where are you going to build it on? He's like, Squarespace. And then Squarespace had like 14-day free trial. And uh, I went on and I was like, this is kind of easy. So uh, I ended up doing Squarespace. And I had my website in Squarespace for the past five or six years. And it wasn't until last year that I switched over to Webflow. And I'm not totally in love with Webflow because for the most part, you kind of need someone who knows how to do coding and stuff like that for Webflow versus Squarespace. If you have an intuitive mind, it's very user-friendly and there's enough tutorials online that you're able to, um, to just follow along with different steps and things like that. So I think like the basic plan for Squarespace is like two, it's like under 250 bucks. Um, but I think it's awesome that you don't have a website and be getting a lot of corporate clients. And another thing, dude, that I love that you've been doing are these little videos, even about yourself marketing your business putting that out on instagram and like i love seeing your stuff i'm like damn i need to make a video like that for my own business so i, I always like i love seeing you succeed like that and like you've been doing a lot of great work i'm like damn joey joey got what it takes man he's gonna make it he's gonna make it appreciate it that means yeah. a lot for sure. um yeah so one thing we did talk about and i guess it was gonna be send me an email and i think at a certain point um invest the five bucks get you know yeah. get where do it. i need to go for that i use i personally am a big fan of gmail so when i bought my domain name i went and used gmail to set up my domain name actually i did it through squarespace uh okay. so i went through squarespace so i set up my website like do you want a, a custom domain name or a custom email with this and i was like yeah five bucks a month maybe it's six now i think they raise the price because we're giving you more features um and then what's the other things I wrote here? Oh, so, I mean, this, I was actually going to make another video about this stuff, but it might not all apply to you. Do you have business cards? No. Okay, don't get business cards. <laughs> I always tell people this is something else that I was out shooting the other day, and somebody was like, like hey, you photographer, videographer? I was like, yeah, you have a business card? And I was like, I don't do business cards. We're trying to move towards being a green company. But I'd love to connect with you on LinkedIn real quick. I was like, what's your name? So then I pulled them up on LinkedIn and we got connected. And what I love about that is kind of like what you're kind of doing, right? Like, hey, we got connected on LinkedIn. Now I can already reach out to him uh, versus if I give him a business card, I'm in a position of waiting for him to get a hold of me, right? So like, mm -hmm. I didn't like that. So I try limiting, eliminating all like business cards and stuff like that. Um, being passively aggressive in a way. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, I don't want to say it's aggressive. I mean, Twitch is more, you no know, pro, I'm trying to be proactive, right? I don't want to yeah, sit yeah, here yeah. waiting for the client to give back to me because the same thing, I already, I hit them up two days later. I was like, yo, check out the video that we did for them. It's a pleasure connecting with you. And they're like, yo, that's dope. 
So versus, because if you're, and you've learned this, working with business owners, sometimes it's not that they don't want to work with you. Sometimes they're already so busy and they forget about things, right? So like you have to be proactive about reaching out to them. Um, so what's your thing I had here? What are you doing for bookkeeping? Uh, I'm using QuickBooks. Okay, cool. Good, good. I think the sooner you start using QuickBooks and getting acclimated with that, when it comes down to doing taxes and stuff like that, it makes your life a lot easier. Yeah. Um, and then this is another one that probably doesn't apply to you as much, but um, for invoices, I seen this, I like hired somebody to work for my website and they sent me their invoice and it was invoice number 13. And I was like, fuck, I was like, I'm not, I don't know how good my website's gonna be because I looked at it, I'm the 13th customer working with them. So something I forgot about when I started, because somebody else told me this, I started my invoice at 100. So every invoice I sent out, I was like 101, 102, 103. Mm -hmm. Even though it was my third or fourth client, it was someone looking at the invoice number, they don't realize that. But for a business owner, if you get an invoice, that's like number 13 or something like that. It's like, it's not a good sign. So that's something that I don't know where you were at, but um, that's cool, man. I'm like, I love just seeing you succeed and like just seeing you go from, you know, Texas doing these real estate videos to you doing some like really great production stuff. I love how you're tapping in into the, you know, corporate market and really helping business owners look and really see how they can implement video um, into the strategy. I think that's like so cool that like you really are taking the stuff that you're learning and you're like applying that you're not pondering on it. So that's just like really from someone watching from far away, bro, like kudos to you. Appreciate it. Appreciate yeah. it. Yeah. I see you. I see you leveling up too. I'm like, dang, I got to I got to get up there. I got to run faster. <laughs> hey man, so I'm trying to take my pace. Definitely this year. It's uh, definitely restructuring the business with certain things and definitely trying to get more involved. And I think the big thing in the past was doing like one-off videos and things like that. But I think now is, you know, like you said, talking to the marketing directors, like what are your marketing needs for the year? What's going to be your marketing budget for the year? Let's set up and do a couple of videos. Um, I think the more um, you can get a couple, like all you really need is one good client or retainer and you can work these one-off videos. But if you get two or three good clients or retainers, like it will take your business to another level. So yeah, yeah, that's my goal. My goal is at the end, by, at the end of this year, to have three like really good retainers. Nice. Oh, uh, so that I guess my last question for you: What has been your favorite piece of gear that you bought over this past five months that you feel that has impacted or helped your business? Definitely this. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. This this right here. Uh, it just opens. It just for for a couple reasons. It just opens the door for like so many other things, like shooting testimonials. Um, this, and by, this is the VL one fifty, the okay. Godox VL one fifty. Yeah. Um, and yeah, definitely. Like for yeah, like I said, a couple reasons. It, it opens the door to you now. You can shoot an interview when you're shooting an interview. You look serious. Like just yeah. you just look like you know what you're doing. Like you have this big ass light. Uh, and then, um, yeah, honestly, just the lighting. Like I get excited. Like when I buy other stuff, it's because I need to. Like I bought a wide lens because uh, I needed it because my Tamron really only goes to like 28. Mm -hmm. and I figured there were certain times I might need to go wider than that. But like, I actually get excited like when I buy lighting. Like this is the SL60. Okay, so that's what I have here for this. Yeah, super budget friendly. Like this is what I'll use like most of the time, like on a, uh, you know, on a big, big shoot, I'll use this as a backlight. Mm -hmm. Put on one gun, like this will be shooting like my key light real quick. Yeah. And then, yeah super solid. Like, I get excited when I buy lights. So yeah, definitely yeah. lighting. Lighting is definitely, it's, I think, such a big thing. And it's a piece of gear that, that sticks with you. Because I still have, I still use my Aperture 120 Mark Mark 1. Mm -hmm. um, because it's, it's such a great light, right? Like it's one of those things that you invest up front in some lighting. Um, it goes really far away. Do you have a cart? A cart? Yeah, like like for your gear. Oh no, I really still just kind of use a backpack, and then. Oh, okay. Can't. Yeah. Gotcha. Yeah. yeah, I bought a cart. That's how the favorite thing about last year was this little, like, 
I don't know what they made that cart for. It's not a production cart, but it folds and stuff like that. And that for me, like being able to shoot, being able to put like the camera or something on top of that cart, it has been one of those things. I'm like, damn, this makes my life so much easier. So uh, something something that I'd be screwed with if someone would call me yesterday, um, I mean, today or tomorrow, and like they were like, oh yeah, uh, fly you out to over here is like kind of like, how, what do you do with the lights when you're packing them or when you fly out? That, I would I would be really confused on what I was supposed to do with this. Um, what do you have a lights? Would you use a C stand or what's your setup? It's just all. Uh, this one because it's small, but it's just a regular stand. Yeah, so that's a pretty big. So I mean, there's I have a. Oh, it's I mean, it's stuff, yeah, I mean, there's travel stuff. Um, but honestly, what I've done in the past is depending on the shoot, because like I personally, I don't use, unless I'm doing a, a big shoot where I'm going to be in one place, I don't take my Aperture 120 or this. I've been using these Vovitech panels. You like, showed me those. Yeah. Those in a suitcase, like work wonders for me. And I don't need a big light stand for them. So I can throw... Usually I'll do, I'll get my Pelican case and I'll throw, I'll throw the panels in there and I'll throw the two light stands and I'll throw all my clothes in there with that. And I'll use that as my luggage. The other way that I do it, um, I'll, I'll, I'll do outreach to people that I'm like, yo, I got to shoot in Virginia. I'm looking for a shooter. And then I'm like, Hey, what lighting gear do you got? And then yeah. I'm like, oh, I got an after and this perfect. Well, how much do you want? So I'll hire them, have them bring the lights for myself. Cause like if I'm going to spend, 150 bucks to bring an extra bag for the lighting i'd rather just pay somebody that's already there to have the lighting and i don't have to deal with shit i don't like having to deal with shit you know what i mean yeah. like i rather yeah. charge a client extra i'm already charging them for the extra flying fee and all of that or travel fee so mm -hmm. i'd rather just pay somebody local and start to build that connection too so like if i have another shoot i just hit them up again or maybe if i can make it to a shoot I can now start hiring that person to go out and start shooting for me. And I'm starting to really build my business. I think that's one of the things that when, you know, when you start getting these shoots that you don't have to go to, it really starts to open up your mind to like, I don't have to be at every single shoot. And you know what I mean? And then you're like, let me start thinking bigger and start focusing more doing like, you know, some CEO shit. So, yeah. So. That's what I do with travel. That, that's smart. All right, cool, bro. Well, uh, thank you for your time. Tell everybody where they can find you. Yeah, you can find me on Instagram at Joey the Video Guy and YouTube uh, directed by Joey. But yeah, probably change that to Joey. I'm trying to have everything the same. But for now, it's directed by Joey on YouTube. Nice, nice. All right, brother, man. Appreciate your time, bro. And keep hustling, keep grinding. <laughs> for sure all right man take care brother yes peace